stand and begin our service today uh, with the His mercy is more. Let's sing together. you're here this morning. Um, this is the week of Thanksgiving. I know a lot of people are traveling. Uh, a lot of our students have finished and have gone home. I uh, just encourage you to be safe this week uh, and all the gatherings that will take place. Uh, I also ask you to pray this morning. Uh, Hal let me know about 15, 20 minutes ago that he's not going to be here. Um, he uh, has had some allergies and was just cautious and wanted to be careful in that respect. So if you've ever prayed, pray for me for the next few minutes. So uh, that's not something I'm normally used to. I know we're supposed to be ready in season and out of season. So uh, you pray for me as we'll be looking this morning at First Thessalonians and take a few moments to look at that. So you, you'll have a few extra moments this morning. I'll just remind you of that. On your bulletin, just remind you that we are not having our Thanksgiving meal. We'll have some changes in December related to Sunday school. And we'll be posting those, in, those uh, announcements this next week uh, just to let you know we'll be taking a little bit extra precaution uh, during this season. But we're glad you're here this morning. Let's pray together as we continue to worship. Father, thank you for a beautiful day outside. Thank you for uh, just the opportunity that we have in our country to come and worship. The freedom that uh, we have been given to do that, to, to just be able to gather together and freely worship without threats, without uh, any opposition. We thank you for that. We thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, as we look at this Thanksgiving season, may we be mindful of all that you've done for us, but Lord, more mindful of who you are and what you have done for us through your, through your son on the cross. Uh, Lord, you, um, you are a mighty God, and uh, Lord, you have done so much in our world, and we just pray that you will just continue to work in mighty ways uh, in every situation. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who... Um, right now are struggling through the Thanksgiving season, uh, that it's a difficult time for them. We pray that you will just continue to uplift them and, and uphold them and give them the strength and the things that they're dealing with. Uh, Lord, guide us as we continue to worship now. Lord, it's in your name we pray. Amen. 
I have a, a quick announcement prayer request as well. Uh, December the 6th, the evening of December the 6th, we plan to uh, do some Christmas music with the choir for the church. Um, we started meeting back sometime around the end of September, 1st of October, and asked around, talked around within the choir. And our desire was to try to present some kind of normalcy this year, to work on some Christmas music we could present to the church and we could uh, sing together and sing praise. Uh, we typically take about five or six months to practice our Christmas music. We've done maybe two had maybe two months worth of practice. So with uh, just pray that the prayers of things would go well. We're not meeting anymore for Sunday morning worship in the second service. We're distanced out in the practice. So that way we can try to preserve our numbers. If somebody gets sick, it doesn't shut us all down. But I would just pray as the, ask for your prayers as the Thanksgiving week comes along, that we would maintain our health, that nobody would um, get sick, that we would be able to do that for the church. Uh, the afternoon, the evening of September the 6th, time will be around 5.30 or so. We'll get more details out about that. Let's stand and continue our worship now with another uh, hymn, He Leadeth Me. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought.
invite you to take your Bible and turn with me this morning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a um, very familiar passage, a passage that we often use at this time of the year, and, uh, but I want to elaborate on it briefly, very briefly, um, so uh, just want you to take a look at that and maybe it'll, it'll cause you to think about some things. I started to do some congregation participation, but I won't do that to you today. Uh, some of you are going, please, thank you. Um, but just take a moment, as before we look at these three verses, just to think for a moment, and I was sharing this with, with our youth this past week, just what are some things you're thankful for, not the big things, but the little things? Um, I've learned to be thankful for a smile through the eyes since we can't see people's facial expressions right now. And you can see people that you know, and you, and you see the the twinkle or the spark in their eyes. But there are a lot of things in life that I think we often forget to be thankful for. Um, I know just to wake up every morning uh, after having had two heart attacks, when I wake up every morning, I'm grateful for another evening that the Lord has taken me through and another morning that I have, have awakened. So Sometimes I think we just need to stop, and maybe this is the season, but I think it's a, it's a weekly, a monthly, a yearly thing that we need to do not just at Thanksgiving, but pause sometimes just to be thankful for what you have, not just materially, but sometimes just those simple little things that we are blessed with. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, again, is a familiar passage, but just look at that with me. It says... Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, obviously we turn to this passage many times, and the main subject here is we think of thanksgiving, when it says give thanks in all circumstances or in all things. And so when we often look at this, we think of that. But I want you to notice the, the other important words in there. It says to to be joyful always. It says to pray continually. It says in, in all circumstances give thanks. Not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances give thanks. You know, and I think a lot of times we need to have a proper perspective when we look at this because I think oftentimes when we, we think about our thanksgiving, there are, are three attitudes, I think, sometimes that steal our thankfulness. Um, as I thought about this, and again, I was, Arlene could tell you, I was scratching notes down as we were singing just a moment ago. But I think there are three things that, that keep us from being thankful. The first one that I think of is pride. Um, you know, I think we have grown up in a country that says you can do anything you want to do. You can accomplish it. You can do it. It all comes down to us. It comes down to what we can accomplish and what we can do. 
you know, is it Nike? You know, you can do it. Or, you know, we, we've all got these ideas that, that everything is possible that we can accomplish within ourselves. And I think sometimes we have this attitude, there's no one to thank but ourself for, for what we have. And so I think sometimes our pride gets in the way. Proverbs 16, 18 reminds us that pride goes before destruction. And so sometimes when we think that we're all that, we need to remember that, that we need to watch our pride and watch the things that, that we think we have accomplished and understand that. I think a second thing that when we look at this, I think it's, and again, it's, it's the things that keep us from being thankful. I think it's, it's a critical spirit. It's the idea of constantly complaining about things in our life. Um, the question we all have to ask ourselves do we complain more about things in life or do we give thanks more? You know, think back on even your past 24 hours or think about this past week and was your attitude one of complaining or was your, your, your attitude one of, of thanksgiving? And it may have been some things, I know we've got several church members that are dealing with and have dealt with a lot of difficulties in the last six to eight months. Some have dealt with financial issues. Some have dealt with COVID issues. Some have dealt with loss of loved ones and all kinds of things. And so, so, so many times we develop this critical spirit because of things that are going on. Um, I think when we look at this, I, I, I'm always reminded that I, I've often heard, and I, and I used to try to remind myself with my own children as they were growing up, and it's sadly that children, they say, hear 10 critical comments for every one positive thing that they hear. And I think to young parents or parents of teenagers, I think we need to be very mindful that so many times we can have that critical, complaining, harsh attitude toward our children or toward other people. And again, 10 times for every one positive that we hear. So I think often we look at this and realize that there, there can be a, a critical spirit. There can be a constant complaining that keeps us from being thankful. And then a third thing I think we can, we can look here is to realize that not only does the pride get in the way, but I think oftentimes we just take things for granted. We take things for granted. When's the last time you just stopped to think of the, the home you live in or the cars that you drive or the food that you have on your table. You know, there are times that I think about the amount of food we waste, and I think about third world countries, and I think about children who are digging through dumpsters to find a meal, and yet we take for granted all the little simple things that we have, and I, and I think we do. I think we take those things for granted. Um, someone once said, if the stars only came out one time a year, we'd stay out all night to watch them. And so I think we have to have that kind of attitude to realize that look at the things in our life and don't take anything for granted. Don't take the, the, those little things or the big things and, and understand those, those, that kind of attitude. I, I read a story that I love, and author Rudyard Kipling uh, was once told by a reporter that uh, someone had calculated that all the money that you make from your writings amounts to over $100 a word. And so Rudyard Kipling kind of said, hmm, I, I wasn't really aware of that. And so the reporter, trying to be cute, pulled out a $100 bill, and he said, give me one of those $100 words. And Mr. Kipling took the, the $100 bill, put it in his pocket, and said, thanks. You know, I think that's a great attitude to realize thanks, thanks is a $100 word. Thanks is a $1,000 word. And I think sometimes, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes just to hear a simple thanks is all that we need. I mean, $100 bills are nice, but thanks is probably what we need to hear many, many times. You know, two things I want to kind of wrap up with and I want to share a little bit at the end. Realize there are two things that our thanksgiving should be. Our thanksgiving, first of all, should be expressed. Look back with me at Psalm 107, uh, verse 1. Part of it is on our, our marquee outside right now. 
And most of you are probably aware we have limited space on how much we can put, so I couldn't put the complete verse. But look at this, and let's read all the way down to verse 9. Psalm 107, beginning with verse 1. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, that he redeemed from the hand of the foe those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south, some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things." You know, oftentimes we just need to realize, and again, being thankful for things is okay, but being thankful for the one who gives us those things is even better. To realize that through Jesus Christ, we have everything. First and foremost, we have, we have abundant life. We have been saved from an eternity in hell. We have been saved through that, and that is the greatest gift that God could ever give us. But again, we've, we've also got things that we need to, to express and God appreciates our thanksgiving. Um, psychologists tell us that sincere gratitude or thanksgiving is the healthiest of all human emotions. And so we need to look at that and realize the benefits of that alone and what it does. So, so our thanksgiving needs to be expressed. And then secondly, our thanksgiving needs to be expansive. Not just expressed, but it needs to be expansive. And what I mean by that is it needs to include our blessings and our burdens. Now, I know as we, I've actually been here before in sermons before, it's hard to say being thankful for the burdens and the difficulties and the problems. But I don't know about you, but there are many things that God has taught me through those difficulties. Was I glad they were there? No. But did I learn from them? Yes. And it's just like anything in life, if we're not pressed, if we're not challenged, you know, if, if, we, if the only math problem you ever faced was 2 plus 2, you wouldn't be very good at math. You know, if the only basketball team you ever played were people that were 3 foot tall, you probably wouldn't be a very good basketball player. We have to be challenged. There are things that have to come in our life that, that may be burdens, but God works through those things. And so in our Thanksgiving being expansive, it needs to be the idea that it's the blessings that we receive, but it's also the burdens that we have to go through and the things that God is going to teach us through that. Um, for many of you this, this week, it's kind of a tough time because perhaps some of your children were coming for Thanksgiving or you were going to them, and, and that's kind of been ruled out right now. And so it may make things difficult, but we have to realize sometimes the things that happen we don't always have control of. So I think when we look at this, when we look back at 1 Thessalonians 5.18 in that last verse, when it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks because this is God's will, because of what he wants to do in our life. God knows, I think, that if we do it, then our lives are going to be changed that we're going to have that, that attitude of, of gratitude, that attitude of thanks that, that we need to have, and we won't let pride, you know, we won't let the, the other things get in the way of us. We'll understand that God has given us these things, and we need to move forward in that. Let me share with you something that someone had shared with me, and you may have read this, but I think it's so important to realize. It says, be thankful. Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did... What would, be the, what would there be to look forward to? Be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times, you grow. Be thankful for your limitations, because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and your character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for the setbacks. 
Gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be thankful for your troubles, and they can become your blessings. Let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you for uh, just the, the truth of your word. Uh, Lord, as always, you teach us so much through, uh, through simple verses. And Lord, I just pray during this season that we will pause long enough to be thankful. Um, to be thankful for, for our blessings, but also for our burdens. Uh, maybe, Lord, we, we don't even see in those burdens the good that comes out of it, but maybe a year from now or even five years from now, we may see how you have worked and how you work through that difficulty. Lord, oftentimes just to make us more dependent on you. Lord, I, I thank you for these that are here this morning. I pray for even the one this morning that, that may be struggling in life right now, that, uh, Lord, they'll just take the time to focus on you to give their thanks to you for whatever's going on and, and to realize that you will walk with them through that. Lord, thank you for the opportunity we've had to worship. Lord, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing this morning. <laughs>